There we go. We are live now. Okay. So yeah, we are live now. So okay. hey everyone, just let us know the regions you belong to in the chats. So we will wait, wait two or three more minutes and then we will start. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so let me start with my introduction. So hey everyone, my name is Aryan and I'm one of the Dean Alchemist at Covalent. So yeah. We have a, a EUO show today who is going to tell us about, uh, who is going to host a work, workshop on introduction to farming business. So yeah, if you have any questions about the farming business, you can write in chats. And yeah, without any further delay, I just want to hand over to EUO show. So yeah, you can start. Thanks, Arian. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. um, Guys, welcome to this Zoom lecture. My name is Ewosho Olushesi. And um, today I am actually going to be introducing you guys to farming business. I, I don't know if um, anyone here has actually been thinking of going into farming business. So if you have actually been thinking this is an um, opportunity for you to get introduced into the business. Yeah, let's, um, let me give um, a brief introduction about farming. Actually, uh, well, well, when I was still very much little, if I hear anything about, if I hear people talk about farm, 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 farming, the only thing I think about is um, probably planting, just planting, of um, crops and then harvesting, but but then as time went on, um, I I discovered that it was it was more than just planting of crops and harvesting. Then it, it also involves um, rearing of animals. So I, I gave the definition of farming to be um, farming is an act of process uh, of working the ground, planting of seeds, and growing edible plants. And then it's kind of, you can also describe it as raising of animals for milk or meat as farming. So the, this means that um, farming involves planting of crops and harvesting. And then it is also um, rearing of animals for whatever um, purpose is also called farming. Um, the agricultural sector is um, a very, very large se sector, mostly in African countries, like um, agriculture serves as, um, a, 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 serves as um, a real source of income for, for people. And then it, it serves as an um, export for countries. And then it is a, a very, very large um, source of living for them. So people tend to, go into agriculture on a large scale, especially in African countries. Now, in this um, lecture, I would actually be showing you four different um, farming business you can do. There are a lot of farming business, but for this lecture, I'm just going to be talking about um, four of them. But before them, let let me just um, quickly give you um, a recap about um, types of farming that we have. Um, we have um, arable. Arian, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh -huh, okay, thank you. We have arable farming. We have pastoral farming, and then we have fixed farming. So, what are arable farming? Arable farming are just, it is more like a type of farming that involves just 
planting of crops and harvesting it alone. That is what arable farming means. And then we have um, pastoral farming. Pastoral farming is a, is a type of farming that involves um, rearing of animals alone. That is what pastoral farming is. And then we also have mixed farming. From the from the word mixed, mixed farming is um, the type of farming that involves both. If you are rearing animals, and then if you are if you are also planting crops and harvesting, you are you are practicing what we call mixed farming. So that's that about types of farming. So in um, in this, like I said, I'll be showing you four different um, businesses you can actually embark on if you think if or if you want to go into the farming business. Like I said, there are tons of other farming businesses you can go to. But for this lecture, I'm talking about just four. And the first one I'm going to be talking about is um, poultry farming. Um, poultry farming involves um, rearing of birds. Like um, we have um, chicken, we have turkey, we have goose, and so on. It depends on um, the type of um, birds you want to rear. So then we we'll go to let's let's add on to the things you should um, consider before choosing the poultry farm. Um, for for any type of business whatsoever. If you want to go into it, there are a lot of things for you to consider. You just don't venture into businesses without considering some certain factors. If you do that, at the long run, you might be running the business at loss. So let's look at um, the things to consider before choosing a poultry farm. Now you have to consider you have to consider the type of poultry bed you want to be. In. Now let's let's give for example you want to rear chickens, and then you you should you should know what you want to derive from the chicken you are you are actually raising. Chicken you are raising, are you raising them for meat, or are you lay are you rearing them for the the for eggs that they want to produce? So if if you are the type that wants to uh, do a farming business and then the farming business you want to do is poultry farming, and then you you are you you've done disability study, you've gone around your area, and then you know that people buy mostly chicken to eat. Like if 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 you feel um the meat of the chicken is selling more than the eggs. Then it is it is appropriate. It is better for you to go into to rear birds that would be raised for meat alone. Examples are broilers. Broilers are a type of chickens that, um, that, that, that are good to be raised for for meat. You get and then broilers they grow from a hatch and they can weigh up to forty gram to one point um one point five to two kg within six weeks only. So it means within six weeks of um, rearing broilers, it can go grow up to two kg, two kilograms, depending on how much you feed them. So if you, are, if you want to rear bread for the meat alone, you should go into broilers. And then we have layers too. From the, lay, from the word lay, they are, they are, they are the ends that um, lay eggs for, commercial purpose. You can also sell um, layers for meat too, but then they, they are more useful when it comes to laying of eggs. And then compared to broilers, they are smaller. They don't weigh up to broilers. So if you want to say, if you want to, if you consider selling of eggs, if you just want um, your birds to lay eggs for you and then you sell, you should consider going for uh, layers. And then we have cockroaches too. They are, they are, cockroaches are just like broilers. They are also used, they, they are also good for meat production. 
and then the the, the I think they they sell they sell very very well they sell very well especially when when you're selling them for meat depending on um, the, um, your your area though because there are some areas that there are some countries let me see that um, probably there are there are there are laws against them um, selling of um, of animals so mm -hmm. if if that is not in play i think you can consider going for corporal and then you can do you can do a mixture of them you can go for broilers layers and corporals together if if, if if you if you have a large area so the second thing to consider is um you checking for a suitable farm location because they are they are poultry birds and they lay um the 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 kind of um defecates you cannot rear them in an area that is congested where there are a lot of people because uh, um, the odor of your poultry would actually disturb them but if you are if you are doing it on a if you are doing it on a small scale you can actually do it in your house and then you clean up regularly with that it wouldn't the odor wouldn't disturb them um anybody and then but if you think you want to venture into it on a large scale it is better for you to get a location that it is far away from people um, let me read what i have here where your farm is situated, situated is very important for your business to start a poultry you need a farm obviously you need a farm site where you would um, where your animals the size of the poultry farmland should be determined by the number of birds you want to wear if you are going on a small scale you can just you can um, get you can make um small cages in, in your house or you can even uh, you can you can decide not to make cages for them you can just put them in an enclosed area and then allow them walk around if you have enough land at your backyard and you cannot afford um at all to you cannot acquire a new site it's always better to start small from there you can become big and then once you are you are you are you are, you are um, convinced already that you you are okay with the poultry family then you can decide to 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 um expand you have to provide them a good housing for the birds if if you are going to make them walk around you have to make sure that um, your uh, the area is uh, well um, sprayed with um, um there are chemicals you use to spray because of um, them them they are they are Chickens are kind of prone to diseases. So if you don't, especially broilers, they are very, very weak birds. So they get sick through contamination easily. So you need to provide a good housing for your birds. And then feeding and medication of birds is very, very important. Very, very important. The way you feed your birds will determine how, how how they will grow and how fast and how well they will grow. If you feed your um, your birds with um, quality food, it is certain that they are going to grow very big and then very, very healthy and fast. And then plus the medication, you need to um, medicate them regularly. You can get a vet doctor to do that for you. Your vet doctor would actually put you through more on that. For commercial poultry production, good quality, high nutritious food is a must. If you are rearing them and then you, you, you are rearing them for business, not just for consumption, for your consumption alone, you have to make sure that you give them nutritious and quality food. Quality and neat fit keep the birds healthy and always very, very productive, obviously. The feed must be kept clean and dry always, as contaminated feed can infect poultry. Like I said, you need to 
make sure that whatever it is you are giving your your birds are clean so as not to infect them fresh quality and nutritious food is the key to success in poultry farming i said that earlier if you want your birds to grow big and then you want them to grow fast you feed them very well and then another thing to consider is marketing and sales of the poultry bird you you cannot just start um, a poultry business if you don't already like uh, taking a, a study on where and how to sell them because the, the aim of you wearing the poultry bird is for you to make profit so if you are if you, if you don't actually know how and where to sell them and then you wear poultry birds you might end up you might end up losing and then um, most times it is if you are not wearing um on on the large scale it is mostly good for you to wear them during to the period them um, during the festive when you know people are going to actually buy chickens especially um christmas demand for chicken during christmas period is always very very high so if you are doing a small scale you you can you can start four months earlier or i mean three months earlier you can start three months earlier and then before december your chickens will be very very big i think um that is that about um poultry birds and then you need to consider your capital so because it takes it, it makes it takes capital for you to run a business but if you are not going on a large scale then you don't really need to do much capital. let's go to pig farming, farming is okay. Aaron, can you hear me Hello, Arian. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Pigri is very lucrative. Um, I, I know a lot of people. I know that a lot of people like to eat um, pigs, um, except if they are Muslims. Muslims, will, because of their religion, don't, um, don't eat pigs. Um, don't eat the, the, the meat produced from pig is called pork. We don't eat pork, but that is yeah. But we have a lot of um, Christians who a lot of Christians who eat um, pork meat. I'm coming. So, if you are thinking of going into um, pigry. There are also a lot of things for you to consider. And then number one is getting um, getting a farmland. Pigs are, are, are like when they grow, they grow big in size. So unlike chickens, where you don't really need a very large space, you need them. Um, Sorry for the great transmission. Like I was saying, if you want to rear pigs, you need them um, to consider a farmland. Like um, it, it has to be spacious because they grow big in size. And then if you get them in a um, in a very very small space, they won't grow very very well. So you need to consider getting a farmland, mostly far away from um residential areas because of the smell this they, they if pigs are, are animals that are that are, that have this very offensive odor so if if you have a lot of them you cannot rear them in residential areas because the smell will disturb your neighbors um the second one is getting a modern pen there are there are um holding pens that um are, are, that, that makes pigry wearing difficult like 
some some are done in such a way that um, they don't have um, space for for they don't have a portion of their um, house which is called pen for water. You, you are supposed to have um, one for water and then one for their feet. So if you are, if you consider going into a, a poor um, piggery farm, you need to make sure that them. Um, the kind of pen you are going to build for them is more than it's for your own good because it's it helps you to it makes your work easy while cleaning because they, they need them um, they need to have their uh, pen well kept always because pigs are kind of um dirty kind of so if you don't take care of them they would they would um stool in their feet and then um, from there, they can even get contaminated. So if you get the modern pen, it would actually be easy for you to, to take care of them. Setting up a big pen is necessary if you don't want to, if you don't want the pigs to injure themselves. A well-equipped and spacious pen can save you lots of money would have been spent on treating it this. If you put your um, pigs in an enclosed area, the fact that pigs are very, very stubborn, because I'm a farmer and I rare pigs, they are very, very stubborn. They cannot cope in enclosed areas because if you put them together, obviously the bigger ones are going to be bullying the smaller ones. From there, they, they tend to injure each other. If you have, if you are used to um, a piggy farm or if you have been to a piggy farm, you notice that some of the pigs have injuries on their bodies. These are caused by these are caused during fights because they tend to fight a lot while they are eating the fights, while they are probably when they want to mate with each other at the fight. So getting a big and modern pen is um, very necessary. Getting LD pigs too. This is very, very important. If you want to rear pigs, and then you you want to get um, your value for money. Like at the end of the day, if you want to make real money from the business you are doing, you need to get all the pigs. They are pigs that are, they are um, they are they are crossbreed. Some 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 um, farmers don't take note of that. They don't mind because they just want to make money. They, they cross different breeds together. And then that is very, very bad. Because once that is done, the, the piglets um, tend to be tend to be prone to diseases and then they become like very, very weak. So if you consider going to a piglet business, you need to do proper research on, on pigs. You can mostly meet your vet. If you meet your vet, uh, your vet can can actually um, give you, enlighten you more, and then tell you what to do. Doing a proper research on pigs can also save you a lot of cash. When you buy pigs with un untraceable history, you lose a lot of money. You should consider buying piglets with history of vaccination. This is very important. Too. Just like humans, pigs, they need them, um, they need medications. I, I, I think they, they need it more than humans yeah, because they are they are they are not immune to diseases. They are very very prone to them. In fact, if if um if if you are not careful, if you allow infections to get into your farm, it can wipe it can wipe out your farm. Something like that. So a similar thing has happened to me before, but. Thank God I was able to um, do something fast about it. So you need to get LD pigs when if you consider going into piggy farming. Then you need to, you need to get um, a vet, like I said, to help you do a regular checkup. It, it, it can be monthly, probably once in a month, and then from there your your vet can actually quickly notice if there's anything wrong with your pigs or, or there's there's something you should do and then you tell you then you should do. 
Another thing you should consider is their feeding. Pigs are glutons. They, they, they eat very, they eat plenty of food. They eat plenty of food. So if you consider going into um, piggery, you need to know that um, you are going to spend a lot, more, a lot of money on them feeding. They eat. And then if, the, if you can feed them properly, it will show in their body that you, 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 you feel proud of yourself because your, your pigs will be looking very healthy and then very, very big. And that is it. And then uh, consumers tend to buy pigs that are, are big. They, consumers go for size mostly. That is those that are, those that are selling live pigs too. Like, for me, when my pigs grow up, I sell, I sell them live. I sell to those that are going to kill um, and refrigerate and sell to others. So if you are going into piggery, you should consider proper feeding. Feed your pigs very well. And then if it is possible, you can feed them three times in a day. But if not, you have to, you can feed them in the morning and then in the evening, but make sure that they have more than enough to eat. And then they need clean water too. They need clean water. If I, 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 I think, like, I, I, I don't really think pigs are very, very dirty. But then if you are dirty, your pigs will be dirty. If you clean your, your pen, a lot, you you would notice that um, there will be changes in your pigs. Whatever promotes cleanliness and healthy living to your pigs should be properly carried out. That is cleaning, constant cleaning. I think um, that is that about piggery. Let me recap things to consider: getting a farmland, a modern pen, getting healthy pigs getting proper feeding and medication. And then you need to know that for every business, capital is required. Pig farming is one sure way of becoming a millionaire. When, if, you, if you follow guidelines, if you follow proper procedures, you'd, you'd actually, you are going to make a lot from it. Um, to the third, um, Third farming business that I want to introduce to you. That that is um, a type of um, arable farming which involves planting and harvesting of plants. Cassava farming is um, a profitable agricultural business, not only in Nigeria, in a lot of countries. But I I think African countries tend to go into agriculture more. And then it is like a sort of livelihood for millions of farmers. And um, cassava serves as um, a, like food to a lot of people because it can be it can be processed into a lot of, of other foods. We have we have curry that is um, cassava flour. We have um, tapioca. We have fufu. We have chips. And then cassava is very rich in vitamins and carbs and calcium. So it is, it is, it, 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 that makes it one of them a very, very profitable agricultural business to venture into. Now, things you need to consider before setting up a cassava farm. Just like every other business, like I've been saying, you need to consider capital, that's, that's like the first thing for you to consider for any, whatever business you want to venture into. But, but then, once you want to go into cassava farming, the first thing, apart from capital, is getting a site, a farmland, not just a site, a farmland that is rich, that is very, very rich in uh, nutrients. Um, you can, cassava grows, Best in areas with deep and well drained loamy soil, adequate to rainfall. Cassava is a type of plant that needs a lot of water, a lot of water. 
So if if even when it is not um, rainy season, you have to do irrigation on your farm and make sure there is water always available. The factors which guide you to determine if an area will be suitable for growing cassava include vegetation cover, soil texture, and fertility. These are the things you need to consider while getting a farmland. You just don't you don't just get a farm and then you start them um, rearing. I mean, you start planting cassava, you, you might end up not getting anything from it. You, you need to consider the soil texture and the fertility of the soil and the topography of the land. For you to know um, soils that are fertile, they, they usually have um, dark color, like dark red or dark brown. The dark color shows that the soil has a lot of organic matter but if the soil looks green and sometimes contains green or blue spots, it means that there is poor drainage and water logging. Do not get, do not grow cassava on soils that get water logged. So, soils that, that don't actually take in water should not, are not appropriate for you to wear your, um, for you to plant your cassava. Uh, like I said earlier, you also need them. Um, start of capital for for you to start a cassava business and then it is actually not that much if if you have a farmland already or if you can get from family members if you can get that then the the other ones are kind of not really expensive except you are going on on a very very large scale you need to um, get um, the stems and then you need to pay for labor because obviously you will not be you will not be working you will not be working on the land yourself if it's on the large scale and if you are going more than with the use of tractors plows and all you are obviously going to be paying for that and then another thing to consider is um is you selecting the stem to plant for you to plant um, cassava stems, you have to look for healthy ones. Because just like in humans and animals, there are some that are healthy and there are some that are not. Select healthy cassava plants in the farm. Healthy cassava plants have robust stems and branches and minimal stem and leaf damage by pest and diseases. These are um, the, the, the cassava stems that are healthy are not prone to diseases. Unlike other ones that are not healthy, the disadvantage is that um, if you have just little outbreak, it is going to affect all of them and then they are most probably going to die and then you are going to lose a lot of money. Another thing to consider is um, weed disease and pest control. Weed, pest and disease can affect the growth of a cassava. It's always very, very important to weed the cassava plant 20 to 25 centimeters high, three weeks after planting. That means uh, you should always take out unwanted plants from your farm where you have planted your cassava, because obviously they would be dragging and competing for nutrients with your cassava if you don't take them out. Then after one or two months after the first weeding. Also, when the soil of the month gets too hard, break it to the hole so that the water and air can um, get to nourish the roots. If, 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 if the soil where you have planted the cassava gets taken up, it is important for you to look for a way to, to break it. And this um, allows um, water and air to get in. So your cassava can actually get in uh, nutrients to grow. Another thing is marketing. There are some um, there are some areas that do not need large marketing for cassava because the demand for cassava is very very high. Like where I come from, my village, they they are into cassava farming 
and then they find it very, very easy to sell. Some, some even buy the cassava from you once before harvest, like when the harvest time is drawing near, they will pay for it and then probably will even come and harvest it themselves. But then for you to go into cassava farming, you need to think of um, marketing, how to probably advertise your, your product. That is depending on the scale you want to operate. You can build the website. You can take advantage of the internet and use um, social medias like uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, etc. You can create flyers. Um, and this, this goes to other businesses too. Each, every, each and every business needs advertisement. It needs marketing for you to sell. I think we are done about uh, we are done for cassava, and then now let's go to catfish. Catfish, uh, they are they are like the fastest growing animal husbandry industry in Nigeria and many parts of the world, Africa. Um, fish farming is actually is very very I think it's popular everywhere, not just in African countries. Like, because um, it is like um, like a major source of food, and then I think a, a lot of a lot of countries are into fish farming, and then we we'll talk about um, catfish farming now. Um, what are the things you should consider before you go into catfish farming? Just like every other business, capital. Fish farming needs a huge capital, except if you are just going for um, um, personal consumption alone. If not, if you are going on a large scale, you need um, you need capital, big capital. Even if you are just, even if you just plan to rear just like 500 pieces of them, um, of catfish fingerlings, before you grow them from fingerlings to adults, you need to spend, you spend a lot of money on them, um, on feeding and then construction of your pond takes money too. So well, if, if you are going into um, catfish, fish, catfish farming, you need to know that you are going to spend money. For, for the ponds, there are, there are different kind of ponds you can actually use. I mean, you can use ponds and then and you can use, um, you can actually dig the ground or use modern ponds where you would build. You can, you can use um, concrete. The one my have is with the use of concrete, but there are disadvantages because um, sometimes the concrete gets soft and, and then water starts to leak and then you need to continue and occasionally maintain it but well, if you are if you are using um, um, a, a dog pond more like a river kind of um, it it actually does not require you to do, to do maintenance mostly all, all you need for that is um, security because obviously if you are going to do that you need to do it close to where there is river and that cannot be inside your house, that, that has to be outside where people might be passing. So you need security. There's, you can just put um, a thick net on top and then leave space for feeding. Another thing to consider if you are going into fish farming is uh, space for rearing. If you plan to have a big cast fish farm, you need to buy a land. If you don't already have, you you need either a plot or half plot of land to grow about ten thousand fish. Like that is if you want to go very big in the last scale. Small fish farmers interested in growing between one or two thousand catfish only need about fourteen square of feet space. You don't need much space if you are going on a small scale. One of the major, I think this this should even come. It this should come first. Or probably come after capital. Water is very, very 
it is it, 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 like that does not even need to be told. Everybody knows that fishes depend on water to survive. So if you are going into fish farming, you need to know that you have to have adequate source of water. Source of water that is actually not going to cease anytime because you need to constantly change um, water for your fishes. Something happened while I, I was rearing fish. I, there was a time I wanted to drain, drain um, the water in the pond and I drained. I had pumping machine. So I thought after I had drained the water, then I I will switch on the pump and then start pumping water back into it because that is always what I've been doing. But unfortunately for me, that day, after draining the water, I I tried to switch on the pumping machine and then it, it started developing faults. It did not work. Like why I'm saying this is we if you are going to um farming, a fish farming, you have to be very, very cautious and then make sure there is water available. Don't assume. I assumed, the, okay, the pumping machine was going to work because it has always been working like that. So it, it took me it took me a while before I could get it back on because I called an engineer to come fix it for me. And then luckily for me, there was nothing wrong with my fishes. I pumped the water back and then they were okay. But then after that, I realized that I made a very big mistake. It, it because the situation could have been worse. I could have lost my fishes. So I got a, a, a tank where I always made sure that I would stock with water. So even if the um, poppy machine developed fault, I was going to use the water, pending the time that I would repair the pumping machine. So water is very, very essential, adequate water. And then you need to always, um, make sure that you change your water regularly. You can, you can actually dig a borehole. I think um, there are people that do that. You can dig a borehole near your pond. And then I think with that, you get a pumping machine and then you are good to go. And then um, we, after considering water, you also need to consider feeding. Just like every other animal, fish also like, food, fishes also need to eat, not like, it's not all animals that like to eat. Fishes need to eat, and then fishes need to eat a lot. The more you feed them, the more they grow. And fishes, fishes are, fishes are very, very funny. They when well, especially catfish, if you if you if you don't actually feed them well, they wouldn't grow well. And then you wouldn't even be able to um you can't you can't you can't predict, you can't guess the number of months they have used. If you don't feed them well, they won't actually grow in size. Like other animals, for example, um pigs, if you don't feed your pigs well, you know. Okay, this, this pig is actually an adult pig, but it is not, it is malnourished, it's not fed well. Fishes don't, don't grow like that. They would actually grow like they are little. They wouldn't increase in size if you don't feed them well. But if you feed them well, they will increase in size. You might even still be mistaking, um, mistaking juveniles for, mistaking uh, um, adults for juveniles if you don't feed your um, cats, fish, I mean, fishes, all fishes, if you don't feed them more. So if you are going into fish farming, you need to consider your capital, like I have said. You need to consider space for rearing. You can just have, you can have, you can even have just a small tank at the back of your house. If you are not going large scale, it is that, it is that simple. You can, you can you, you can build them. You can get them, and there are tanks. There are tanks. They call GP tanks. I don't know if it is just here in Nigeria that it is called um, 
stupid tax. But then even even you can even get a big a big bowl or bucket depending on the number of um of fishes you want to wear. I have a friend that has has like ten bowls at the back of his house where he wears his his fishes and then takes care of them well, feeds them well, but he's doing it on a small scale. He's not planning to go, he's not planning to go um, big on it. He, 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 after, after harvesting the ones that he and his family would eat, he will sell the remaining. That is small scale and that is like a nice idea. So I think um, that would be all um, I, I've talked about before for businesses that one can venture into. And like I said, there are a whole lot of um, businesses. You still have maize farming. You can go into maize farming. You can go into goat rearing. A lot. But I just decided to take this one because I have actually tried all, I have actually tried all of them. I have tried, I have reared them, I have a pigry. I, I've once planted um, cassava and then I've bred catfish too. That is why I came up with these um, four businesses. And then all these businesses that I've talked about here are very lucrative. Now, from all you have heard, I think um, if you are planning to go into if you are planning to go into farming business, you can decide which one best suits you which one um, is comfortable, would you be comfortable with rearing in your area? And then which one is not actually going to, if you are, if you are considering the capital, which one is not going to make you spend a whole lot of money? All of them, um, all of this farming business I've talked about do not really require huge capital. If you are going, if you want to just rear them, it's you. If you are not planning to go on a large scale, they require less capital. So with this um, class, I think um, if you if you have interest or if you have interest in in, in um, farming, you might have had one in mind for you to go for you to venture into. And then if you if you didn't have any prior interest in farming. Probably with this lecture, you might have um, interest. I I think that that would be all. Um, if there are any questions, I would, I would attend to them. Um, like I should ask. I I hope um I was audible enough for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, uh, guys, if you have any question, you can ask in Q&A or in a chat. Also, if you want to uh, reach out to uh, EO Oshu, then yeah. uh, you can you can uh, connect uh, to him on Discord or Twitter or Telegram. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm available on Discord, um, Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram. Yeah. And I can yeah. also drop my email address and that is okay yes please all right if you don't have any questions then we can uh, end this webinar yeah okay Thanks. Thanks everyone for joining and uh, thanks you Oshu for the amazing webinar about uh, introduction of uh, uh, farming. Um, thank you for having me, Arian. Th 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 thanks for giving your pre precious time. So yeah, see you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.